Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Bowman, Editor-in-Chief of Supply Chain Brain, and I want to welcome you to this webinar presentation on key challenges in fresh grocery and supermarket supply chains presented by Tive. One quick reminder, there will be a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. Audience members are encouraged to submit their questions at any time during the presentation by clicking on that Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Now, grocery retail chains have known a secret for a number of years now, fresh is in, but grocery supply chain retailers have a slim chance of success if they don't develop a way to inject end-to-end -end visibility into their supermarket supply chains. The inability to track a shipment's location, temperature, humidity, and other factors in real time while in transit results in significant losses annually. Grocery retailers estimate that billions in food arrive spoiled and unusable. So how do you eliminate delays and damage? That's our topic for today. And with that, I'd like to introduce today's speaker. Krenar Kamoni is CEO and founder of Tive, the global supply chain visibility company. He has developed breakthrough ideas in data analytics, logistics, and electronics design for nearly 20 years. As an innovator and market leader, he has successfully developed and led cross-functional teams while enhancing business performance in sales, finance, supply chain logistics, distribution, and manufacturing. Most recently, Krenar founded Tive, a cloud-based platform that uses IoT sensors to capture critical real-time shipment sensor data as products are shipped worldwide. And with that, I want to hand it over to Krenar Kamoni. Krenar, take it away. Thank you, Bob, uh, and thank you everyone for joining today. Really excited about the, uh, this webinar. So as Bob mentioned, we're gonna talk about key challenges in fresh grocery and supermarket supply chains. Uh, just a quick agenda here. Uh, I'll do a quick introduction around how the company started and then talk a little bit about the current state, the challenges, uh, solutions to consider and the benefits that uh, customers and retailers that are getting from visibility today. It all started back in 2015. Um, it's it's uh, my background's in technology. I used to design chipsets for smartphones. I used to work for an MIT startup where we built the world's most efficient base stations. They go on cell towers, a lot of electronics and wireless experience. And the way I stumbled into supply chain logistics is because of that. I guess it's a great picture here <laughs> because of that man over there. And quote unquote through mar marriage, he's my wife's father, uh, so he's my father-in-law, and my father-in-law has a trucking business in Worcester, Massachusetts. <clears throat> and every time I would go to his house, he would be on the phone trying to figure out where his drivers are. Did they load? Did they unload? We're trying to have dinner, or we're trying to have a drink, and he would just always be on the phone. And I'm like, you know what? Let me figure out a way to help you. And decided to make a GPS tracker uh this is back in 2015 started putting in his trucks so i'll put it at the cb radio connect the wires there it was it was it was exciting and fun and what i realized were some shippers were putting these temperature sensors on top of pallets and i would ask truck drivers how do they get the data out of these uh sensors and they would tell me that at the end of the shipment somebody takes this device looks at it plugs it into a printer and gets the data and I'm like, isn't that too late? Like the, this, uh, this truck driver was tracking, was hauling mostly fish and uh, for, uh, seafood. And I'm like, that's way too late. It's after the fact, what's the point? So that's where I came up with the idea. Like, why don't I figure out something that's real time so that we can act and take action before we, the, the shipments are spoiled. And when I looked online trying to find solutions back in 2015, couldn't find anything uh, that was that was good. So I decided to jump in and build it uh, on our own. It's been pretty exciting. These are the, the little trackers, which I can talk a little bit about later to, uh, on this webinar. So what I'll do in this next slide, I just want to share a quick video. So it gives a quick, quick depiction on uh, what we do here at Tive. Whatever your shipment, no matter the mode of transport, the real-time location and condition of your shipment matters. With Tive, you simply activate the tracker with the push of a button and secure it on a shipment at the box, pallet, or container level. That's it. Now, your team has all the data it needs to actively monitor shipments in real time. 
avoiding delays and excursions that cost your company time, money, and customers. Time, because every shipment matters. Awesome. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. It's pretty straightforward. <laughs> and how do we ensure customers uh, get their shipments on time and in full? And what's different about Tive compared to some other solutions that have been around or some other solutions that are out there? So I would say one of the first things that we've done, uh, which we're really proud of, is we've created these single use that can be reused trackers. Uh, however, what we've done that, that's really good is one, they have no lithium batteries, which are very good, number one, for the environment, but at the same time can be put on air shipments much easier. You don't have to declare them as dangerous goods. And what they provide is very accurate uh, information when it comes to location. So the location accuracy at which these trackers uh, uh, work, so the location that they get is very accurate because we don't just use cellular-based triangulation. We're also looking at GPS, we're looking at Wi-Fi positioning and many other means combining them to be able to give you a very accurate location of where the shipment is. At the same time, the sensors that are in here with temperature, humidity, we also have accelerometers to measure shock events around shipments. All of that is very, very accurate. And that's something that customers love and they love the reliability of the, of the product. On top of the tracker, then there's a platform, uh, which is the sauce. It's a software platform, which you can see a quick image. What we do is we pro help customers understand in real time where their shipments are and not just the location, as I mentioned, but also its condition. <clears throat> and we provide insights with this data as they do 10, 20, 100 thousands of shipments a week. We be able to understand how the shipments are performing based on lane, based on carrier and customers uh, really seem to resonate with number one of uh, the user experience and the design that we have on the platform, but two also the data that we provide. The third thing that helps customers quite a bit in a service that we provide is our live monitoring team. And these are actual logistics professionals. They're not just uh, support folks who don't understand the industry. We have logistics professionals who understand the industry, who've had 3PLs, in the past, who've been brokers in the past and really understand how to communicate uh, in this industry. And they're watching your shipments. They're monitoring your shipments 24 seven, uh, which I've seen a huge, like think of it as ADT of monitoring, of ADT of supply chain logistics. And what we've seen is customers give us their workflows. They give us their standard operating procedures. And instead of them worrying about building teams and hiring and attrition and making sure that their, uh, their team is always there. They give us that information on what we need to do to monitor those shipments and we'll do the work for them. Uh, and it's been, it's been really well received. Throughout COVID and also these days with what's happening with supply chains, um, it's, we all know that supply chains have been stretched to the limits and it doesn't matter whether it's in food perishables or in any other industry, even um, you have to constantly be agile. You have to be constantly be able to, to, to be able to, to, to move, to, to change, to be able to meet these uh, demands uh, and be able to, to change whatever necessary so that these disruptions don't stop you. Even like just the, we make these trackers, there's supply chain here also, starting from the semiconductor side of things. When we have to procure semiconductors, makes to ensure that there's no chip shortage. If there's a chip shortage, to be able to switch immediately to another part so that, there, that our customers uh, never run out of trackers so that they can track their shipments. And the same thing in any other industry, especially in the food and perishables, making sure that when we go to a retail store, when we go to a supermarket, and we expect those blueberries, strawberries, bananas, uh, mangoes to always be there. Uh, and that's, that's something that all of us work very hard to, to make happen. And what we've seen, I think with COVID, when everybody was at home, we all started buying more fruits and vegetables and we started all eating uh, a little bit better and cooking a little bit more. And there's been a quite a bit of growth uh, on the perimeter categories. So when it comes to retail stores, there's a lot of increase there. 81% uh, of those uh, categories have seen an increase in the, in the past 12 months, as far as uh, volume goes. And at the same time, their margins improved quite a bit. 
as you can see here, um, in meat, seafood, produce, uh, customers are willing to pay more for higher quality products and getting those products uh, and produce on time and in good condition is, uh, is, is, is been very uh, crucial for customers. The worst thing that can happen, right? It's you go to a, 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 a grocery store, you go to a supermarket, you're trying to find the product that you're looking for and that brand is not there and that brand was not able to get those um, that produce there on time. I think that's the, the biggest fear that exists. And what we do every day is ensure that those shipments make it there, not just in on time, but also in good condition. And the benefits that customers are getting today are not just, I guess I said, in food and perishables, it's across many industries. Think of pharmaceuticals, uh, think, think in electronics, think of uh, even like servers. Uh, we track a lot of shipments. We have largest uh, meat distributors across the globe using us every single day. We have the uh, largest dairy shippers around the globe use us every single day. It's been, it's been an exciting journey and we're very excited to continue to bring more and more, uh, not just data, but insights and services and people and bodies to the problem so that we can make sure that our customers are extremely happy with the services that we provide. And as demand has increased, obviously this creates some challenges uh, in the industry. And if you think the if you think of shelf life and spoilage with uh, uh, produce, that's the biggest fear. <laughs> that's uh, making sure that those berries, again, those vegetables, those fruits, make it there uh, in good condition. But you want to make sure that the temperature deviations that happen throughout the journey don't affect the shelf life. Of the uh, of of the fruit. So, for instance, if you're if you're receiving something, you go and buy. Next thing you expect it to last for three four days, but it lasts for twenty four hours. Or it lasts for two days. Customers are not uh, are not going to be happy, and we avoid that uh, by helping customers take action before those shipments go outside of temperature for a long time. Uh, if you leave a particular shipment more than let's say eight hours above. Uh, 32, 33 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's at 40 degrees for eight hours, you essentially are completely ruining that shipment and you cannot even get it into, into the store. The other part that's always been there, it's FISMA, which is Food Safety Modernization Act and compliance. We wanna make sure that customers today, they have access to the data. Sometimes they use temperature loggers that are not real time, they're passive. However, what happens with temperature loggers that are not real time, is all that data essentially, quote unquote, gets thrown into trash uh, because nobody takes it, analyzes it, looks at it. And if there's a recall of there's an issue 12 months later or nine months later, you have to maintain that data for 12 months if there's an issue even three months later and you wanna look at back what the temperature uh, uh, journey was of that shipment and you don't have the data, it's quite a bit of a challenge. And what, with our uh, solution, because these trackers are real time and they're continuously sending data to the cloud, that data remains in the cloud. And you can always go back three months, nine months, 12 months, 24 months later and look at it uh, to make sure that if there's any compliance requirements. And what we've seen, um, <clears throat> there's the other benefit that supermarkets and uh, grocery stores and retailers can get from the retail stores can get from this is all the inbound shipments that they receive today. If, if they're using passive loggers, that's fine. They can look at that data if there if there's a, an issue. However, the benefit of getting real time data one is you can also get the real time location of the shipment and knowing when shipments going to be late knowing that a shipment's early, knowing that a particular shipment is actually um, more critical, let's say, because something happened with the temperature or something happened with the reefer and they're very close by, you want to uh, bring that into the dock sooner than the rest. I think it's, uh, it, it's crucial to be able to save spoilage and to be able to save uh, um, waste in food. And what we're open to, what we've seen is suppliers are open to sharing this data in real time with, their, uh, with, the, with the receivers. And then the receivers can see exactly when the shipments are coming. And uh, that's something that uh, um, 
would be very beneficial and what we've seen some retail stores really benefit from it. And the other part is the live monitoring, as I mentioned, where we extend your team's effectiveness to be able to provide these services so that uh, if there is a challenge, we can immediately contact the carrier. We can immediately contact the truck driver because they're the person who are actually going to be able to take action immediately on that shipment. So we're not just giving you data. We're also giving you services that take action with that data immediately. At the end of the day, visibility is about not just about data, but it's also about making sure that those shipments, not just also around on time and full, but we actually save shipments if they were not about to arrive on time and in full. And we do that by taking action uh, and becoming part of your team. Real time is, uh, so one of the things that um, is crucial to be able to provide the service is integrations with systems, um, making sure that all the data providers from different sources are collaborating and working together one thing that we've done here at Ty, which I'm very proud of, we started the Open Visibility Network, and you guys can check that sometime at openvisibility.com. It partners like Project 44, Forkites, Transvoyant, Everstream, Weather Optics, uh, soon many others to join. We work together so that we're able to provide you visibility um, and, and be able to get that uh, value, time to value, like reduce that time to value instead of... Uh, trying to pull data from many sources that data sometimes already exists and a lot of these vendors uh, we can provide data immediately to you so that integration is key and integrating also with transportation management systems uh, on the retail store that way uh, we'll be able to know exactly where the inbound shipments are coming which suppliers some suppliers are not integrated they don't have tms making it really easy for them to upload their data, making it really easy for them to show which orders are coming inbound for, uh, for shipments. I think that's very uh, important and integration is, is huge. And I'm very proud of the Open Visibility Network, which we can talk more some other time for sure. Next thing I would say is collaboration. Collaboration today is still the same as it was before. Uh, I think this is an area that really needs a lot of innovation and we're pushing very hard. And the reason is same is because we're still working with emails, we're still working with phone calls, and we're still working with Excel spreadsheets when it comes to collaboration. I was just, uh, um, the, yesterday I was at LAX meeting with a customer that does a lot of freight and they ship, they ship quite a bit over the air. And um, sometimes they don't know when a truck is showing up and it's 5 a.m. The shipment's supposed to be there at 6 a.m and they still don't have the paperwork. Now they have to make phone calls, they have to send emails, see where the truck is, see where the truck driver is. And all of that data, whether order is going out, it's residing somewhere on a TMS from the other side, from the supplier. So how do we make collaboration more effective so that instead of using phone calls and emails, you can easily understand where that shipment is or where it is on the TMS. Where, where, when is it going to be there? Is it going to be there at 5 a.m.? Who's the truck driver? What the condition of that shipment is? And what's interesting is when that truck shows up, you can take that same, for instance, in this case, that same tracker that came in and use it for a shipment right afterwards on an air shipment to be able to track that. And then what happens is both the supplier who and the receiver on the freight side and the receiver on the other end from the freight forward or shipping it all have that same stream of data and they're all collaborating with one uh, so, uh, the stream of data and uh, like they all believe in that data they all trust that data uh, but the challenge has been we just need to crack that part of the of the code so everybody collaborates and i'm very optimistic that's going to happen there, that's, I believe, the only way that uh, the future is uh, in supply chain logistics. I always use an example, like the most global interconnected system out there is the internet. And the next one is the financial system. And if you look at the financial system, you wire money, send money back and forth to one another, but the data is very, very clean, right? I have $10, you have 10, I give you two, you have 12, I have eight. However, the next globally most interconnected system, which is supply chain logistics, the data is still debated. The data is still not clean. Hence, it's really difficult to create that collaboration and make it really easy for, uh, for everybody to, to and, and transparent for everybody. 
as I mentioned, the other part is you're just using our software. Customers can obviously actively do load management to avoid any damages and delays, set up various alerts, um, and move from exception management to managing by exception uh, to speed to action instead of being reactive, be more proactive instead of doing something and realizing that uh, a, your load got rejected. And now you have to do an air shipment or do another shipment or go to a wholesaler, sell that load and, and move it so that like reroute another truck or ship another thing like six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours later. So it makes it to that store. That's very reactive. And everything that's reactive, as we all know, takes us a lot of time out of the day. <laughs> all everything, every time we try and put out fires, it just takes a long time out of your day and you don't get to do all the other things that you plan to do. So being a little bit more proactive, being ahead is uh, something that we enable from our customers. And as I mentioned, the active and passive, meaning those temperature loggers, which are awesome. They've done an amazing job in the industry. And from what I've seen is it's more customers, more customers realizing that moving towards more real time, like active uh, loggers, active trackers is something that's happening and people are seeing the benefit every single day. Again, just to reiterate, it's not, we believe it's, yes, it's, it's process, it's technology, but the most important P is the in front, which is people, right? People process technology. And it's not just tech and data and trackers. Again, it's people are the ones that can really help your uh, journey and can really uh, be there for you. And this is something our team is really dedicated to and one of our core values we have core values but one of them is uh we have your back and it's not just our employees back not just our customers back but everybody's um back in the entire ecosystem whether it's our partners whether it's our vendors whether it's our customers we have your back and as i mentioned we hire logistics experts especially who work on the live monitoring side actively monitoring shipments around the clock Every single week, we save uh, a ton of shipments by contacting truck drivers, by contacting 3PLs, by contacting carriers, making sure that those shipments make it on time and in full, uh, because we understand exactly what's happening with the shipment. And we work very closely with you, with your standard operating procedures, with where your workflows, what matters most to you. And then people from our side are just that extended part of your company, extended part of your team. And we we work as hard uh, for you as we would work for anyone else. Um, and, and that's one thing that's been, that's been really awesome. Thank you. Um, this is all I had for today. Really, thank you for, for everybody for joining. I'm really looking forward to a Q&A session here. And um, thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Kunar. And we do indeed have some questions from the audience already. And while we were answering them, the audience is encouraged to continue to submit questions that Kunar, I'm sure, would be only too happy to answer. Here's one to start off with, Krenar. Um, This audience uh, questioner says visibility means different things. Boy, is that not true. <laughs> what do you consider to be the quote unquote cornerstone of visibility across the board, the facets almost everyone needs to have? Yeah, um, it, visibility means a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Sometimes visibility means even just what how many SKUs you have, what kind of inventory you have in the warehouse. Um, where we come into play and where we look at visibility is from that point A to point B. It could go through B, C, D, E, Z, but it's just a shipment going from one location to the final destination, right? Origin, uh, destination, pair. And... For us, visibility is not just the data on where that shipment is and its, its condition. I think that's very important and we have to have that. Nobody can should debate that. It's that next level. How do we take visibility to improve customer experience? How do we take visibility to actually save those shipments, as I mentioned, with our team, with people, with analysis around data and insights that we create? So that's, that's how we look at visibility. Um, and I believe if we look at it in that way, and if we make sure that like all the shipments around the world get there on time and in full, this planet is gonna be much more efficient than it is today. And uh, it's gonna operate in, in m m smoother, I would say, than it is today. And I, I think of one, just last thing quickly, as a graph, 
if you think of in the x axis uh, like y axis risk or um, uh, delays, challenges, issues, and then you put on the x axis collaboration. The more we collaborate together with data that we all believe in, the risk, issues, challenges, delays, all of those go down. Um, and this is something where uh, our vision and mission is to make sure that X axis goes to as close to infinity as possible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are the costs of the trackers? Are they reusable and for how long? Um, yes, they are single use and reusable. So single use, it's the same tracker, but you can also reuse it by just opening this little flap here, putting a micro USB and charging it. You can reuse it as many times as you like. Uh, there is no limit there. As far as cost goes, it ranges. I would say it's two digit dollars. It's not three digit dollars. Think of in the mid range there. Um, but I, I don't want to exact give exact pricing here on a webinar, but would love to answer that question. Uh, just feel free to reach out. Okay. Picking up on what you were talking about, the importance of collaboration, this audience member wants to know what about collaboration? How do you ensure that people with existing platforms can leverage data that Tive has to offer for inter and intra company collaboration? Um, I would love, to, like, that's a great question. And whoever asks, I would love to dig in a little bit deeper on understanding the systems that you're using and the tools that you're using. Um, as I mentioned earlier around the op open visibility, network that's something that we've partnered with all the all the players that I mentioned earlier project for different four kites transvoyant everstream uh, weather optics many other players that are jumping in these are the areas where we can easily collaborate and make sure that you don't I call the swivel chair you're not uh, um, constantly jumping from one place to another to it, it you should be able to see the data in one place but certainly there are many technology solutions that contribute toward that, such as APIs, webhooks, integrations, things like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And being open about those it's, is key. So that's mm -hmm. like, even if, if you want to access this data, it's pretty straightforward from our side. We make it available and easy. So if you, even if you just Google Tive API, you'll be able to see that. Okay. Um, here's one for you. I'm sure you'll be able to answer this. What is the key differentiator between Tive and other competitors in the same space? Um, very good question. This is something that um, I think I talked briefly a little bit about it. One thing that differentiates us from everywhere, we're very innovative and we listen to our customers very, very carefully. So when I started this company, my goal was yes, to make a great tracker, but also make it really simple for everybody to use so that it in, it, in, in logistics and supply chain and this user experience with warehouse folks, with people who are working the entire stream, it's, it's just, it's a no brainer for them. But the big difference, as I mentioned, is with the single use, we were the first in the industry to innovative 5G ready tracker. We were the first in the industry with a single use 5G ready tracker that has no lithium batteries. Uh, but the location accuracy that we have on this cost effective tracker is paramount compared to, to everybody else, right? It's within feet instead of miles away. We have a great user experience on our, on our platform uh, that customers love. And the API integrations are very easy to do. Our live monitoring teaming is, is great. Our support team is great. Our sales team are great. I think starting, but everything starts from the basics and the basics is the accuracy of the data is very high compared to competitors. This question again picks up on collaboration, but in terms of like the service solution side, uh, it, it asks, does Tive work with other players in the market? If so, who would you highlight? I, I already, I think I believe highlighted a few of them. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, we're very, I don't, we don't discriminate. Uh, we are, uh, we're, I would say more like Switzerland or um, we're working with everybody. And that's our goal. I think the okay. only way to achieve um, uh, complete visibility and with the open visibility network, as I mentioned, you can see some of the names there at openvisibility.com. Yeah. We're collaborating with everyone. You alluded earlier, uh, Kernar, to the uh, OVN, the Open Visibility <clears throat> Network. And in fact, we have an audience question saying, what is this open visibility network that I have been hearing about? And how can people leverage it to bring their visibility game to the next level? 
So I can give you a couple examples. I think that's the best way probably to answer it. Um, think of it as like it, it, there's pr the providers, some providers out there have done an amazing job at integrating with so many transportation management systems, with so many carriers. This is something that Tive is not going to do, right? We might integrate with QTM, but we're not going to go integrate with every single telematics and ELD out there and carrier. So what we're working on is if you're a customer and you want, for instance, some of this data in a TMS, and that TMS is already integrated with one of the platforms that you're using, why don't we just push that data to the platform and straight to TMS? Because that TMS integration might, number one, cost money, which is fine, but the second thing might cost time. So instead of you getting that data into your transportation management system, let's say you just want like a simple thing where the shipment is, um, if it's gonna take two, three months, why don't we get there and money potentially depending on the TMS provider, why don't we get there in a matter of a week? And that's what we, we believe in Open Visibility Network is let's collaborate with all the vendors out there. Nobody has 100% of everything. And through collaboration, we'll be able to get to close to 100% for our customers. Thank you. Um, here's a concern that a lot of companies have. Uh, this uh, questioner is asking from the point of view of sustainability and perishables waste, how could Tive help customers do better? From this perspective, the questioner says, could there be product improvements here, either planned or in the pipeline? Um, I'm assuming when the, the, the uh, question is product, meaning our product improvements here, planned or in the pipeline? I'm thinking that sounds like what they're asking, yes. Yeah. Uh, there are some great startups and companies. They're looking more at the order side of things with retailer and supplier so that they can manage their inventory and order management part uh, really well. So what we're looking to do is integrate with them and work with them much closely so we can uh, overall reduce waste. I think there's, there's, I have two, three in my top of my head right now that we're looking at and integrating with and working with, but that the, again, collaboration with partners like that is gonna make this uh, um, a reality. Of course, sustainability and perishables waste is at the very heart of this product anyway, isn't it? Because we talked at the top of the show about the problem of spoilage and waste. And this is what the whole point of the, or one of the whole points of the product is, is to reduce that. Uh, a question here saying, I understand you have a live monitoring team. What is it and how can companies benefit from using it? Yeah, um, the big benefit is pretty straightforward. Again, instead of you hiring a team and managing that team uh, so that they can essentially watch shipments for you. I think that's great. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, if, if that's something that you're very effective at, let's keep doing it. However, I've seen that a lot of customers can save a lot of money by using Tive instead of building their own team and not just cost of money, but a lot of time and headaches that you have. Um, and we have logistics professionals that are monitoring these, these shipments for you. And we'll do, we'll take care of your shipments and watch your shipments same way as you would. Like that's how involved we want to be. That's how uh, ingrained we want to be in your business. Uh, and that's the biggest benefit that customers get. Thank you. Well, it looks like we have time for one more question. And this one comes from an audience member basically saying, how easy is it to get started with Tide? <clears throat> um, that's a good question, Bob. But it's pretty straightforward to get started with Tide. I would say first thing, go to type.com uh, or just type meaning of OTIF. Like if you wanna know what on time and in full is, I think we're the second link on Google. So you'll be able to, to go in there and just click on the get started button, fill out the information and uh, our team will reach out immediately to you. And once we reach out, we'll understand how many shipments are you doing? What locations are you shipping? What matters to you the most? Um, and we'll just, start immediately with a, with, a, with a few trackers, maybe 25, maybe 50, maybe 100. So we can run through those in a week or two. And then two weeks later, look at that data and really start ramping up. It's very straightforward and very easy to get going. Great. Krenar Kamoni, I want to thank you so much for that excellent presentation. I want to thank our audience also for listening in and for submitting your questions as well. Scan that QR code to see uh, the Tive solution in action. And there also is Tive's website, tive.com. So again, thank you, Krenard. Thank you, audience. Thank you, everybody. Everyone have a great day.
Thank you.